Now, we know that different um, transition metals will have different distances between the levels. Therefore, they'll absorb different photons. And that's why different transition metals have different colors. In fact, we even know that the same type of transition metal can have a different distance depending on the ligands it's connected to or depending on what its charge is. So the same um, transition metal might have different colors depending on what complexes it's in. So again, the, uh, one of the interesting things about transition metals are the different colors they can take on in solution. And now we've kind of explained uh, so where those colors come from. Because transition metals have different energy levels, it will absorb, I kind of missed that part. Could well, we know that different, um, different complexes are going to have different energy differences. Mm -hmm. Now, so uh, how do we figure out what wavelength would be absorbed here? Well, first of all, we would want you to know what this energy difference is. Okay. And whatever this energy difference is, that has to be the exact same energy of the photon that's going to be absorbed. Okay. And then that would tell us what its frequency and wavelength is. But then you might have another transition metal that has a smaller energy difference. And therefore, it would absorb a photon with less energy mm -hmm. or less frequency and a, and a higher wavelength. So because there's different amounts, different amounts of energy splitting for different complexes, there will be different colors for different complexes. By the way, um, a little terminology I might have mentioned, the color that's opposite, colors that are opposite to each other are called the complementary colors. So orange and blue here are complementary, or yellow and violet are complementary. So when a color is absorbed, the color that you perceive is the color that is complementary to that. Okay, let's try ranking these in terms of their delta. So here's the three complexes we're dealing with. These three complexes, and we want to rank these in terms of their deltas. Looks like a good process. Now you started by finding the oxidation numbers, and the main thing you discovered is that all of the metals have the same 
oxidation number. So we're not going to be able to use these oxidation numbers to figure anything out because they're all the same. Now, I think you said that the cyanide would have the biggest, the cyanide compound would have the biggest delta. Yeah. How did you know that? Because cyanide is a strong field ligand. From our spectrochemical series. Right. Cyanide is the strongest from the spectrochemical series, so we know this is, tends to be the strongest, which means it has the biggest delta. So this would tend to be the biggest delta. How did you know ammonia came before water? Uh, it's in its order. It's, yeah, it's in order this one because it just look at your spectrochemical yeah. series. Yeah. yeah. There's not a big difference between those and they're, they're right next to each other, but ammonia comes before water. So we would expect that the water compound would have the smallest delta from our spectrochemical series. So I think we've answered the question. This would be biggest, and this would be in the middle, and this would be smallest. Mm -hmm. Now let's rank these in terms of the energy of the visible light that's absorbed. Rank these same compounds in terms of the energy of the visible light that's absorbed. have the biggest change in electron energy when the electron is promoted? The cyanide? Yeah, this will have the biggest change in electron energy. But where did that electron energy come from? From the photon. In right. fact, the change in the electron's energy is equal to the energy of the photon that's absorbed. The energy that the electron gains is exactly the same as the energy that the photon lost. That's conservation of energy. So all the energy that used to be on that photon was used up, transferring the electron. And we've seen, unless the photon has the exact right amount of energy, it won't be absorbed at all. OK, so we've really already answered the question. Since this is the case where it takes the most energy to promote an electron, it'll take the most energy on the photon. Mm -hmm. So this is going to have the greatest energy of visible light absorbed, and this will be the least. Good. And which of these would have the greatest frequency of energy absorbed? for the same reason, and which would have the greatest wavelength absorbed. H2O. All right, now, good. So you guys did really, really, really well on this problem. How could I make this harder? Well, I made this easier by giving you a bunch of setup problems. I could have just asked, which of these will absorb the greatest wavelength of energy? I could have just asked, which of these will absorb the greatest wavelength of energy? And then you would have to figure it out step by step. How would you work that out? Well, you would again start by figuring out who has the biggest delta just like we did here, that would tell you who has the greatest frequency, and then it would be the opposite of that for who would have the greatest wavelength. So can we um, mm -hmm. mess it? Well, basically, if, um, so the point is you could, uh, if, if I hadn't asked you these intermediate questions, you would have to come up with those on your own in order to answer the question. So if I was asking you just who has the, so this is the one with the biggest wavelength absorbed. So the key here is that we figured out the delta first, to the order of the deltas. Once you know the order of the deltas, it's pretty easy to figure out what the order of the energies, the frequencies, or the wavelengths is. Energy and energy. But be careful because the order of the wavelengths is opposite to the order of the frequencies and the energies. It would be easy to make a mistake about that if you were in a hurry. Yeah. 